There are two ways we grow as a human being, right? You can learn something and grow, or you can transform and grow. Now the difference is this, you can learn something and forget it, but then there's transformation. Transformation is different from learning. Transformation is a change in how you see the world, and it expands your mind, and when your mind expands, it can never again sh shrink back to its original size. A particular mindset where you have enough faith in yourself that you can do what you feel you need to do without worrying about judgment from others or praise from others. Being unfuckwithable means you do what you know is right without worrying what other people think because sometimes what other people think is their bullshit, is their rule. Body, mind, empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind. Welcome to the Body Mind Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host Simlan and our guest today is Vishen Lakhiani. Vishen is the founder and CEO of Mind Valley. He's an entrepreneur, speaker, and an author of the book The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. Vishen, welcome to the show. Hi Sim, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I think it's like super cool that that you're this uh, international entrepreneur and speaker and author but you still decide to live in such a small country like Estonia. Oh, well, which is... <laughs> I don't think Estonia is small at all. I love Estonia. It's my favorite country in the world. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think your audience should probably know that my wife is Estonian and my yeah. children are Estonian and uh, we have a company here. Yeah, that's that's like really something you... I, I didn't like expect at first, but once I found out about it, it's uh, quite uh, really, really inspiring, uh, especially for like a smaller with a country with such a small population? Well, I think the population here is small, yes, but it is, I mean, you, Estonia has the highest number of startups per capita, it is mm. the most digital nation on the planet, and the air is fresh, the nature is amazing, the old town is beautiful, the food is unreal, yeah. and everybody here has, or at least everyone I meet, right, has this passion for health and wellness, so I absolutely love Estonia. Yeah. I try to spend as much time here as I can. Mm. How much can you, like, Per year, how much time you spend here? Well, this past summer was interesting because we launched our Mind Valley University City Campus project in Estonia. We had, um, we created, we rented all of Kulturi Cartel for 30 days. Mm. We brought in 80 teachers from around the world. A thousand one hundred people moved to Estonia to learn from all of these extraordinary teachers. And uh, um, there, there were even a couple of really famous biohackers there, such as Ben Greenfield. He was mm -hmm. one of our teachers. He came here with his kids for about three and a half weeks. And I'm sure your audience, they probably know Ben Greenfield. So it was a beautiful experiment. Uh, people love Tallinn. And the reason I wanted to bring all of these people here, all of our students from Mind Valley University, is because I love Tallinn. Like, there is no other city I would rather be with my family than in Tallinn. Mm. No, that's nice. Ben Greenfield also said a lot of good things about uh, Tallinn food. Yes, he loved the food over here. Yeah. We were going out and eating almost every night. And then um, he, we would then, and you know, when you're hanging out with Ben Greenfield, not only do you go to the restaurants and eat, but we'll be walking, right? We'll be mm. walking like near, um, near the port over here. And uh, he will bend down and he'll pick up something from the ground and go, hey, we need to eat this plant. This plant is really high and uh, will give you a good uh, protein boost and something uh, like yeah. that. And so like a goat, he will just pick up stuff from the ground and yeah. put it in his mouth. It's really fascinating to see. Yeah, yeah it's like foraging. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I, I like Tallinn. Tallinn's great. But have you like done any, like, how do you find the cold? Have you, have you done any polar plunges in huh. Estonia? Well, so? you see, I studied in the United States in Michigan which is one of the coldest states in the U.S. Mm. In winter, it goes to minus 40, wow. so I am so used to the cold. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do some polar plunges or winter swimming sometime soon <laughs> once the winter comes. Count me in. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I wanted to like, talk a little bit about uh, your book, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind, as well. So I, I find it like it's a really important book in a sense of it kind of shifts the paradigms or opens up the blind spots of culture and right. especially like in, in people. So like, um, can you give a, what's the main message of the book for, for the listeners? Well, the idea is how to move your life to truly living at your full human potential. And the book is based on transformational theory. So, so first let me explain what I mean by transformational theory. So there are two ways we grow as a human being, right? You can learn something and grow, or you can transform and grow. Now the difference is this, you can learn something and forget it. For example, studies show that if you read a book, mm. typically after 24 hours, you will forget 80% of what you read. 
and you know and we go to school we learn stuff in school and we forget that it's useful when we do an exam but after the exam boom we forget mm. it that's learning but then there's transformation transformation is different from learning transformation is a change in how you see the world and it expands your mind and when your mind expands it can never again sh shrink back to its original size yeah. so this book is not about learning this book is about transformation so in the book I give people 10 different mind shifts each builds on the previous one mm. and at the end of this book you view the world in a different way so the book received a really amazing following it became the number one book in the entire world on Amazon oh, yeah. um, and for a brief while for about five days last year I was really proud of the fact that this one book on Amazon sold more than all the Harry Potter books combined <laughs> so I overtook J.K. Rowling That's and the book good. got translated into 20 languages 20 plus languages including mm. Estonian but the book is about these different aspects of transformation um, and and Exploring transformation is what is my passion because I want to create a world where human beings can live their best life And the way to get there is not traditional education. The way to get there is transformational education Biohacking by the way is a key part of what we do. Yeah, yeah. it's it's true that um, I feel like the mainstream advice whether that be in education or healthcare the kind of always You know, it's a quick fix or a, like an like it's to try to cover they're going to try to give like standard recommendations to the wide variety of right. populations which right. actually neglect some of personal uh, quirkinesses and differences and and also it's downright outdated yeah. it's downright outdated like they they traditional education institutions do not keep track with the latest science yeah yeah it's true how how does like let's say culture condition an individual on their everyday level how does it shape their worldview in the first place well culture is basically a passing down of society's rules and beliefs from generation to generation. So imagine this, if you're a fish and you're swimming in the ocean, the fish doesn't really realize that he is in water because there's no other life for a fish, right? Mm. He's always in water. He, it doesn't realize that it's swimming in water. Likewise, we don't realize that we're living our life based on the fact that we are in two different worlds. We're in the physical world. In the physical world, I can pick up my iPhone here and we can agree that this is a glass screen, that this is an iPhone, but there's a mental world, the world of the world of human rituals, beliefs, thoughts, but this world is what I call the culture scape. In this world, we are programmed to survive in. Mm. So in other words, in our culture scape, in this world of ideas in our head, we are basically living not what is true, but what people tell us is true. Mm. So let's relate this to biohacking, right? A lot of people can relate, can relate to this. When I grew up, what I learned was healthy was to drink milk three times a day. Mm. What I learned was healthy was to add Nestle's Milo powder to my milk. By the way, that's 40% sugar. Yeah. <laughs> what I learned was healthy, that is I needed to eat bread mm. and, and with cheese, right? Yeah, yeah. And for breakfast, sometimes we would have Nutella. Now, if you're a biohacker, you knew that all of this are horrible, horrible, horrible ideas. Yeah. But to me, that was what was healthy. I learned to count calories. I learned that, that if I wanted to stay fit, I should maybe go jogging. Mm. Today, with modern science, we know that a lot of these things are old wives' tales. They are not necessarily true. And so, people blindly live ideas of health that have been discredited yeah. and they get these ideas from their parents who get them from their parents who get them from their parents yeah. without questioning and really what transformation is about is about questioning it's about it's about getting out of this pattern of repeat hmm. and and repeat and repeat and creating your own rules for how to function in the world and looking at what science and data is telling us are the new ways yeah, it's, it's, it's so true that culture is literally the, the lens that is going to tell you what is right and what is wrong, what you believe about the world. And, and based on that, you're going to you know, coordinate your behavior based, exactly. based on that belief system of that culture. Exactly. And so what you find is that the countries, the cultures which are most enforced tend to also also be the cultures where you have the highest number of people who are unhappy mm. or people who are clinically obese or people who are not living their best lives now one of the things I like about Estonia is Estonia became a naturally 
a, a natural culture where people question. Estonia has one of the highest rates of atheism in the world. Mm. You can call it, correlate atheism to cultures where people are questioning the mm. rules. Mm. And of course, you can understand why if you know Estonia's history and all the different people yeah. that <laughs> conquered Estonia. So we grew up learning to question, right? And so that's one of the reasons why I think Estonia is doing so well in the world today. It's so ahead of so many other countries. It refuses to follow the bullshit rules, or in my book I call these rules, bullshit rules, mm, B-R-U-L-E-S, the bullshit rules of the culture scape, which is one of the reasons why you notice that these new emerging trends, whether it's technology or robotics or blockchain or biohacking, are emerging in Estonia. Mm. We've successfully created a culture of people who have learned to question. Yeah, and uh, also like in Estonia, the one of the highest uh, rates of education is also in Estonia in the world and uh, or literacy as well like right. next to finland right. so, but yes it's a it's a good kind of a good uh, environment for uh, having access to this growth but you mentioned uh, also these rules which are bullshit rules of uh, culture and society what are some of the bu- rules that uh, you found in your own life and well, how, how did you break them there are there are many different types of rules right calories we know today calories is a rule your body isn't an input output machine mm. counting calories is is I guess there's some minor use to it in a, if, if you're basic at health knowledge, but it's primarily bullshit. Mm. Taking milk, that's a brew. We now yeah. know that milk doesn't improve your bones. Yeah. Strength training and vegetables improve your bones. Yeah. Milk actually can cause a deterioration yeah. in your bones as it tries to balance your pH level. We know that hard work leading to success is quite possibly a brew. Mm. We know that people who sleep better and optimize their sleep can improve their cognition by as much as 30%. Yeah. We know that diets are brew. Diets rely on willpower, which is an expendable resource. Mm. And um, diets often do not lead to, to mass shifts in people. The average American, for example, there's five diets in their lifetime. <laughs> diets is basically a scam where you're selling something that's broken and the customer so needs it, the customer comes back over and over and over again, five times, yeah. the average American. We know dieting is a brew. So bullshit. So, if you look at just health, you can list brule after brule after brule after brule. For example, a high salt diet, we used to think that was unhealthy. And then um, I'm sure you read about Gary Traub's work in mm. 1999, proving mm. that salts have no, no, no correlation <laughs> with bad health. Yeah. Uh, then, then of course, there was the big um, fats are evil yeah. um, scam that happened in the 1950s. It's only in the last one or two decades that we began to realize that fats are actually healthy. So. Rules. We've been living on these rules for the longest time, and the result has been rising obesity across the planet, rising mm. bad health across the planet, and it's time that we started questioning these rules. Exactly, exactly. And uh, how, how do you plan on changing those rules in a sense of? Well, so so at Mind Valley University, one of the things we do is we work with some of the greatest teachers in the world, and we developed an application, a, a learning platform called Mind Valley Quest. See, most online courses, people who buy them do not complete them. 8% is the average completion rate. Mm. Because of the way Quest works, we're able to get 60% plus plus completion rate and we're aiming for 80%. So our students actually complete the Quest. Now, the reason it works so well is because Quest runs like a game. Mm. Every day, you get 10 to 20 minutes of something you need to do to move towards an outcome. Mm. So with Ben Greenfield, our Quest is on longevity. So you learn biohacking to improve your longevity. For example, on day 23, you might learn the importance of using blue light filtering glasses Mm. to improve your your eyesight Mm. and to optimize your sleep. Because we know from modern science that, you know, blue light radiation from computers can influence your sleep. And more recently, it can lead to deteriorating eyesight in Mm. old age. So that's an example of a biohack. Now imagine if you're doing a quest and every day for 30 days, your app is pinging you to learn one new aspect of biohacking and then to stack these on. At the end of 30 days, you've created new habits, new rituals. Hmm. And that's what we do. We transform people in many different areas of life from biohacking to to um, health transformation, to memory optimization, to relationships, to meditation in these 30-day programs. Hmm. Now, what makes it unique as well is that Thousands of students start the program together and work with each other towards completion. Mm. But in 10 minutes a day for 30 days, you can have incredible breakthroughs. So that's Mind Valley Quest. 
but it gets better, right? As people are going through these, these programs, we are also working with scientists to split test populations. Mm. So imagine a thousand people going through a health transformation program and the scientists want to figure out, does butter in your coffee really lead to better weight loss than not having butter in your coffee? So 500 people go through one regimen, 500 people go through another regimen, but in day 15, they start adding butter to their coffee. Mm. And then we test and we see what is the average um, weight loss. And now we have a platform for accurately determining what is what is a, a theory mm. and what is actual data. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're really excited about. We have a, tra a platform that transforms people like crazy, like our WildFit, which is our health transformation program, has one of the highest success rates. You do it, many people do it once, they lose so much weight, their skin clears up, their health transforms, and they never ever go back to dieting yeah. because of the behavioral psychology within it. But as we build up this platform, we also have the most data driven way mm -hmm. to optimize weight loss and health transformation in people nice. because thousands of people come in and we get to test and split test mm -hmm. and study the data. So eventually we're bringing in machine learning, we're bringing in artificial intelligence. We already have 200,000 paying students. Um, and now we want to leverage all of these technologies to build the number one platform in the world to not just educate but to make new scientific discoveries nice, nice. yeah because well, i think like one of the biggest reasons people fail diets or if they fail taking courses online is compliance yes. and they simply forget about it or just right. they aren't able to stick to it so yeah there's there's the key is to making sure that people you know actually implement the changes and exactly. actually take action in the you thing. hit you hit the nail in the yeah. head the problem with many biohacking prop uh, biohacking tools or supplements is compliance mm. now you can engineer compliance through apps and technologies that act as reminder services through collaboration with a cohort of people who are going through the challenge with you mm. and also through um, um, brain engineering or conscious engineering which would be uh, the concept of actually um, bringing in concepts like neuro-linguistic programming or behavioral change psychology to mm. change one's attitude towards compliance. So we look at all three. Nice, nice. So like uh, you, you mentioned that you are focusing mostly on the education system and I actually read a recent article a few months ago in Estonian new newspaper where you said that uh, you want to teach that what uh, school didn't teach you so what, exactly. would, what would be those things, uh, a well, few examples? There is so many, right? For example, I, um, I went to a public school and my mom was a school teacher. So mm -hmm. firstly, you know that I have a lot of respect for schools and I grew up wanting to be a teacher like my mother. But I realized that even if I was the best teacher in the world, I could maybe impact a few hundred people a year. I want to impact billions. Mm -hmm. So I had to rethink how this should work. And that's why we had to look at apps. We had to look at programs like Mind Valley University and so on, right? But one of the things I wish school had taught me, well, number one, I wish school had taught me how to learn more efficiently. Mm. I mean, if you had a genie and the genie gave you one wish, what would you wish for? You would wish for more wishes if you yeah. were smart, right? You would yeah. hack the process. Likewise, if, if schools are teaching you how to, teaching you one thing, the first thing they should teach you is how to learn. Mm. Schools should be teaching first, as soon as a kid learns to learn, teach speed reading, right. teach memory optimization, teach cognition optimization. Now the rest of their studies become so much easier. And, and we've developed these programs with a brilliant um, brain coach. Um, and in fact, the brain coach for Elon Musk, his name is Jim Quick. Mm. And we're now bringing this to Finland. And we're seeing incredible nice. results. Like kids with dyslexia, they're able to double their reading speed. And as a bonus, yeah. they're able to memorize 100 digit list uh, sorry, 100 item list backwards and forwards. So first thing is teach people how to learn. There's a term for this. It's called meta learning. Mm. Now, the second thing is teach people how to use their mind and their soul, mindfulness, meditation. If you read the book Altered Traits, right, it talks about how there's an acceleration in studies on meditation. Today, we know if you meditate, yeah. you will live longer. It improves your telomere length. Yeah. It also improves your heart health, improves your brain functioning. But when is the last time you learned how to meditate in school? Mm -hmm. So number two is teach meditation and teach consciousness um, uh, methods of, of going within. I call these mm. transcendent practices. Mm. Now third, teach better relationships. How to communicate with other human beings. We're entering an age where people have to learn to communicate yeah. better. People have to learn to connect better. Loneliness is up 300% in the mm -hmm. Western world. Even with Facebook and Instagram, we are lonelier than ever. But here's the crazy thing. Harvard Business Review just suggested that loneliness has 
as bad an impact on your health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. <laughs> so we got to teach people how to connect better yeah. in their marriages, with their children, with their friends, with their co-workers. That's number three, yeah. right? It's basically it's social engineering. Mm. Now, number four is um, what I call um, impact. And impact is how to make a better impact at work. This includes things such as leadership, such as productivity, such as um, optimal ways for entrepreneurship. And number five, you guys know, number five is biohacking. Mm. It's everything we can do to make sure our bodies are functioning like a Ferrari yeah. or a Tesla and not a bicycle, right? <laughs> yeah. So how can we make our bodies the best versions of itself? I mean, we know today that two people can have the same chronological age, but their biological age could be 10 years apart. Mm. And we know that human lifespans are increasing, increasing at a tremendous rate. Most of us will live to be 110, 120, but we might live to get there in broken bodies. Because yeah. while we can extend lifespans, we can't reverse aging yet. So the best we can do is slow down aging. Mm. And there are, technology, there are ways to do that. For example, strength training, right? It's, it's one of the ways that I'm, I'm obsessed about in terms of slowing down aging, very high correlation with, with aging mindfulness and meditation. So it's teaching people how to optimize their body. So if you stack it all together, it's meta learning or learning how to learn. It's mindfulness and spiritual um, um, abilities. Mm -hmm. It is social engineering, your relationships. Fourth, it is um, your impact in the world. And fifth is biohacking. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so true. Like I can also relate to the same, same principles from my own experience that, you know, that they don't teach you like what's good to eat at school. They simply, you know, throw the, throw in the chow, right. basically. Right. And you know, and it's funny, I just visited some schools in Finland and I was horrified. Finland has some of the best, one of the best education system in the world, but I was horrified mm, yeah. at what they were making the kids eat. Yeah. It is so bad for the human body. Yeah, but but of course, yeah. it's not that anyone is bad. They just don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's and in America, it's even worse. Of course, <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, maybe like you mentioned, another one of those acronyms or special terms in your new words in your book. One of one of the most unfuckwithable. Right. So like, what 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 does it mean? So unfuckwithable is is a concept for a particular mindset, a particular mindset where you have enough faith in yourself that you know that you can do what you feel you need to do without worrying about judgment from others or praise from others. See, most of us as we're growing up, we learn to feel what other people think. But if you feel what other people think, you may not do what you know to be true. Mm. I have a friend, for example, and he fell in love with a, um, he fell in love with a Muslim girl and he was Christian and they loved each other but they didn't get married because she worried about what her parents would think mm -hmm. of her marrying a Christian. And he worried about what his parents would think of him marrying a Muslim. And that's so silly, <laughs> right? So being unfuckwithable means you do what you know is right mm -hmm. without, without worrying what other people think because sometimes what other people think is their bullshit, is their yeah. rule, yeah. right? Today, it's crazy that two people in love would not marry each other because they have a different religion. Yet, many people force themselves, they deny their own happiness because they're worried about what other people think. Now, unfuckwithable doesn't mean that you just fear, that, that you're just immune to criticism mm. and judgment of others. It also means that you are immune to praise. Mm. In other words, you do not need praise. For example, yeah. I run a company with 300 individuals, right? And I find that sometimes we have younger people who join the company and they need to be praised. If they're mm. not praised, they feel they're failing. Mm. And I explain to them, look, Life isn't about that. You, you cannot be at a job and expect to always be told, oh, you did well, yay, you did well. Yeah. Because if you do that, it's like a drug. Yeah. You need to be self-assured enough to know that you are good, that you are doing the best of your capabilities and not relying on someone else to praise you. So unfuckwithable means you are immune to criticism, but it also means that you are not needing praise to mm. feel good about yourself. Now, it doesn't mean that you're an asshole and you don't care what other people think. You can take criticism, but it's like a feedback loop. Mm. If, if somebody's giving you good feedback, like a boss or, or a coworker who cares about you, you can take that feedback, you can improve, but you're not afraid to make life decisions because of someone else's judgment. That's what it means to be unfuckwithable. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Kind of, you, you become immune to both the external world as well as this desire to get this exactly. imme immediate gratification. It's about your truth. Yeah. It's about your truth. It's about living life on your terms. 
Yeah, it's a really powerful term, and it's a good example of how language shapes exactly. your understanding exactly. of the world and uh, these rules. And uh, you're also doing like, a lot of like biohacking and stuff, and we've been talking a few about a few of them. So maybe give us a few examples of more what your daily biohacks well, involve. Well, um, one of the things I do is intermittent fasting. Mm. So, and I actually learned that from Ben Greenfield when we were here in Tallinn. So, the, so the story was this: me and Ben Greenfield would go to uh, Ben loved old Hansa. And I know Estonians <laughs> don't like this restaurant, right? Because it's very touristy, but we love the beer there. We love the food uh, there. So you need to go and eat at this restaurant, Old Hansa. So we'd go to Old Hansa. We'd finish our meal at 9 p.m. And then we would do a 16-hour intermittent fast. We wouldn't eat again until um, like 12, mm. 12 p.m. the next day. The only thing that was allowed is water or coffee. Mm. So that's an example of a biohack, intermittent fasting. I love intermittent fasting. Mm. Uh, now, what Ben would also do, so Ben refers to this as um, um, metabolic efficiency, mm. intermittent fasting, and a 10-minute walk. So Thailand's a beautiful city to walk, getting enough day a sunlight as you're walking. And the third one is hemosis, which means a hot, cold shower, mm. right? So stacking those together, you have a really good way to optimize your metabolism. So that's one example. Another thing I do is hacking vision. Um, this is now possible. We know that vision is a function of our brain and not just the shape of our eyes. And with, a, with the right eye exercises, you can improve your vision. Mm. So I've been improving my vision. I've gone from 2040 to 2025. Wow. I still have astigmatism. I want to fix that. Mm. But at least in my right eye, I've been able to get my vision almost back to normal where I don't need glasses as much as I did before. Yeah. Um, other ways is using WildFit, which is our Mind Valley program. And uh, WildFit, um, WildFit is a behavioral change methodology over 90 days that that rewires you so you only eat the things which are healthy. And, and mm. it's amazing because skin improves, uh, mm. hair, hair improves. Um, so in my case, for example, it's really crazy, right? I can't even explain it, but I stopped going gray. I was wow. going gray and I was losing my hair. That stopped. Wow. And the other thing is I ended up losing 14 pounds, my skin improved and everything. And then your energy level goes mm. up. And so that's based on behavioral psychology to change the way you approach food. Um, so I stack on a lot of these programs and when I find something that really works, um, I test it on myself first, then I test it on my employees, then I bring it to the world. So right now, one of the things that we've been testing on our, on our employees is a program called 10X that we've developed. It's based a lot, inspired by Doug McGuff's work on mm -hmm. super slow strength training. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of Doug McGuff, but he showed that, for example, uh, with a 20 minute super slow strength routine, mm -hmm. Five exercises called the Big Five, 90 seconds per exercises in the gym, 30 minutes a week, you can accelerate muscle growth significantly. Wow. So we've been doing this on a lot of men and women in our company. Mm -hmm. We've been able to get people to really, really, really good muscle growth to the point where people in our company are now uh, training to run Spartan races together <laughs> and marathons together. We've been able to get people so fit. Nice, nice. That's really good. glad to hear. And uh, I think... Uh uh, it's, it's inspiring for you, uh, for your employees as well, to see that you're actually practicing what you preach, exactly. so to say, and you know, transforming it or transitioning over to the culture system. Yeah. Yeah. So, where can people uh, learn more about you and your work and well, what you're um, doing? The best thing is follow me on Instagram. Um, vision. It's just Vision. Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and because I do a lot of my writing and sharing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and then, if you want to know more about Mind Valley, go to mindvalley.com. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I'm a writer. And um, my next book is called, my next two books are all on actually very related to biohacking. One is bringing transformation into the workplace. And the third one is called Superhuman Executive, which mm. is biohacking and mind hacking to improve your abilities at work. Mm. Um, and what I do is I, I, I share the ideas I'm discovering on Instagram. And I see if a lot of people like that idea, I know it goes in my book. So I would love um, um, uh, if you guys enjoy this, follow me on Instagram, see what I'm sharing. And click like or comment if you nice. like, like that, and it ends up in the book. And we help popularize these ideas to the world. Yeah, it's like and a rip course, ripple effect. Exactly. And of <laughs> course, mindvalley.com is where you can learn about uh, the main university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, before I let you go, I want to ask you my last question, which is uh, what would be this one piece of advice or a habit you wish you adopted sooner that improved your body and your mind? Well, the number one thing would probably be a 10x, mm. right? Super slow strength training. Right. That has been a game changer for me. 
um, I've been able to, and, and we test everything, so I've been able to see how it's completely reshaped my body, how it's added centimeters to my chest, taken right. centimeters off my waist, given me like a body I'm proud of. Hmm. Um, I wish I'd learned that faster. Wow, that's good. Well, thanks, Fishing, for coming on the podcast and uh, looking forward to your work. And yeah. uh, hopefully we'll do some uh, something in the future again. Thanks for having me, Sid. Awesome. It was good? It was good, yeah. Yeah, I had to modify it a lot for the biohacking community. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's, but, uh, it's, it's good. And so your podcast is purely... Body, mind, empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind. That's it for this episode of the Body Mind Empowerment Podcast. If you want to support us, then I would greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on the iTunes or the other social media platforms. Definitely check out the show notes for the topics that we discussed in this episode. Thanks for listening. My name is Seem. Stay tuned for the next episode. Stay empowered.